This is Sarah Finn. <laughs> she, she works as an agile pr practitioner at Red Hat, basically helping teams uh, work more effectively together and um, not get blocked on things and have good processes and all those things. Uh, Red Hat actually has a really awesome organization internally that focuses on helping teams with this, and it's uh, pretty pretty great. So Sarah has been helping CPE and is um, not going to talk about that at all, really, but about um, <laughs> something I think that we all need as human beings and as a project. I am wearing a FOSDEM t-shirt. That is correct. Um, chat. Um, and then after that, um, I guess we'll go straight into Rich. Yeah, who, I'll jump um, on and introduce him. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll do that. Um, then. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> all right. Um, so we've got two talks, both of them very good. All right. Good luck, Great. Sarah. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the great introduction, uh, Matthew. I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, hi and welcome to the first session um, of the day on the last day of MEST. Um, I'm sure many of you got to take part in lots of different hackfests and uh, community quizzes and uh, different sessions and that. It's, it's been really great. I've really enjoyed it. Um, so today we're going to look at resilience and explore, explore it a little bit um, around how we can help ourselves and each other. So Aoife is going to help out. She's volunteered. She should be on the call here. Is going to keep an eye on the chat. So if anybody has any questions or anything, add them onto the chat um, and Aoife will, Aoife will capture those. And then at the end of the session, if you have any time at all, then we can go through those. If not, I'll definitely uh, reach out on a breakout session or somewhere in chat to address those questions. So we want to, um, on this session today, I will go through, I suppose, different aspects of resilience and why, and why it's important. But it would be good for yourselves to possibly take out a notepad and pen or, or open up another tab um, on your screen and start kind of jotting down a few things that might resonate with you around possible things that you could take on board to try and improve things in your own lives. So before we kick off, I just want to introduce myself a little bit more. Um, so some, mo probably most of you have never heard um, of, of Sarah Finn. Um, I've been working with CPE, so the Community Platform Engineering Team, since November last year as their Agile coach. Um, and trying to, to work with the team, like Matthew said, um, on addressing challenges that they might have and trying to get them to come together to find solutions. And that includes all their different stakeholders within the community as well. I'm from Ireland uh, in the sunny southeast, the oldest city in, in Ireland, in Waterford, and it's living up to its name today. Sun is absolutely splitting the rocks. Um, if, I, if I get to watch a Liverpool match on any day, I'm happy out, a uh, keen Liverpool fan as well. Um, and I have a, a lovely family as well. You'll see a picture of those and a, and a great um, dog that I love to walk. Um, so for me, like team is team is, a, is the cornerstone of, of how we get things done and create a sense of happiness and also taking time out to do a little bit of self-discovery. So my own um, self-discovery journey probably really happened about 10 years or so when I really needed to uh, build on my own resilience and build on my own um, strengths, inner strengths to, I suppose, allow me to, to progress. Um, at that time, we were in um, a global recession. Myself and Hal Alan had just returned from Australia um, and we had just had our daughter, um, Addison, and both of us were unemployed at the time. So it was a difficult um, time to be in at that point. We did take some time out uh, to pull the, the covers over our head um, to uh, blame the banks, blame everyone else. Uh, but then, you know, we came around and, and kind of said, we are the captains of our own ship. We need to make positive, um, we need to have positive thinking and be a little bit more optimistic and take our own um, actions that we need to take to build on our resilience and to allow us to, to move forward. So that's from a personal perspective. And then as I work with teams, the inclusion of, of teams building on their resilience is, is a huge thing within an agile team. As the teams are sometimes asked to think outside the box and try to change a, a slightly way of working to be more collaborative. So their minds need to be open quite regularly to constantly, continually improve over time. So building their resilience and um, strengthening their inner resources definitely helps on that journey as well. So resilience, what is it? Resilience is the ability to adapt positively 
in the face of adverse adversity and change. So there's always going to be change. There's always going to be uncertainty in the world. But how we view that change and how we view that uncertainty is part of our, our resilience. If we look at it as a positive, as a more of an opportunity, then we are, we're building on our resilience over time. So it might be worthwhile kind of jotting down what does resilience look like for you? Is it, you know, that you can absolutely take on any challenge that comes your way? Um, or is it that you, you reach out and collaborate with people quite regularly and have an optimistic mindset? What's important to note is being resilient doesn't mean that a person won't experience difficulty or distress. So there's no one that, that is unique and that does not experience difficulty or distress in, in their lives. Even billionaires, even people that have the that that would look like have have the best lives possible, they experience difficulty and, and distress as well. But by cultivating resilience, it is possible to navigate our emotions. So to be aware of our emotions, how we're feeling, why are we feeling that way, and to learn from them. So how how will I how will I action this feeling? Is it something that I can do to, to make things better for myself? And harness inner resources to adapt and move forward constructively. So ensuring that I'm making, keeping my um, mental health and well-being um, on, a, on a, good, a good supply so that when things change, that I have the resources um, to allow me to, to move forward positively. So, this board is meant to be as chaotic as it looks because we have never been in such um, an era whereby a lot of things are on our plate at the moment. There's a global pandemic um, that has caused us to shift our structure, our routines, our way of living overnight. Um, and it has caused us to, to shift in our mindsets. And um, some people have kind of knuckled down and, and kept plowing away. Um, hoping that you know things think that, that there's a vaccine that will come out tomorrow and everything will be fine and um, there's others that are trying to adjust a little bit more to it to kind of ease themselves into it and um, to take it easy be a bit self-compassionate um, but there's lots going on there's lots going on that that's not giving ourselves a break giving our minds a rest from everything that we're trying to process on a daily basis so it could be that you're working from home you're trying to juggle child and um, home um, homeschool help you have toddlers asking why all the time you have a dog that wants to go for a walk every second and um, you have a boss that's saying you know time for something new or whatever that might be every week or every day and um, our colleagues or our friends you know it's there's, there's always something to digest and trying to get your your head around as well also we've been never we've never had so much communication which is brilliant in one sense and in another sense we really need to protect yourselves around it so for example we have our, our mobile phones we we're on our laptops quite a lot um now that, that you know we're working from home and and that can kind of sometimes continue into into all hours uh, which shouldn't be the case but we definitely have um an option to to view information at any point uh, which can just be overwhelming and eating into our well-being time and where we need to try and um, ensure that we're, we're working on ourselves and giving ourselves some headspace also with markets fluctuating um, all the time as well it kind of leaves people might be feeling scared about what that might mean and also with revolution and change and protests that are happening all around around the world which is amazing to see people come together and you know to really rally around something that means that means that is important to them but again it's something that we need to uh, to digest so all of this can be a little bit overwhelming if we're not minding ourselves a bit more so if we don't support ourselves to adapt to our ever-changing world, which in reality is it is here to stay, we've never been in such a fast-paced environment with all the technology that we have. And um, that if an event happens in China to tomorrow, you know, our world and um, people are making changes or making opinions or whatever that might be and what's happening from, from other sides of the world. So this is it, you know, this is this is the normal way of life now. So we just need to, to mind ourselves a bit more. Because if we don't do that, what inevitably happens is we all become burnt out. 
And I thought this was a good illustration to, to show what that might look like, uh, whereby, you know, we're not looking after ourselves, our bodies, our ideas are very few. Uh, we don't see a light at the end of the tunnel and um, we're hiding under a desk at some point. Uh, time is, is ticking away um, and just feeling in a, in, a, in a very stuck place um, of keep being on that hamster wheel um, without actually coming up for air. So what might burnout look like? So burnout, and I have experienced this myself um, numerous times, and I still have to go back and really work on, on trying to help myself and build a, build the resilience. Um, but burnout usually starts um, it, with sleep problems. So we're bringing um, all, the, all the information that we've gathered throughout the day, and I've come across a, a stat on it a couple of days ago to say that our brain actually um, tries, has 30,000 thoughts, I think, a day which is phenomenal. I really need to look into that to see if that's a good uh, an accurate fact. Um, but sometimes then we can bring those uh, to, to, to into our bedrooms with it and then it can disturb our sleep when we're not getting a break, when we're not switching off on time. It, it, um, can, we can suffer from being able to focus. So things are taking a little bit longer than usual. usual. We are low or in irritable mood. And a lot of that can feed in from, from the sleep problems if we're not sleeping. We're not able uh, to open up our minds to new ideas, new suggestions, um, because it takes a bit more effort because we're extra tired. Um, we can experience conflict. So with that, um, you know, we could become a little bit defensive, a little bit angry um, ar around uh, people having different, different opinions. Uh, performing basic tasks become harder. We become exa exhausted over time. So some days you might have at the start of this pandemic, whereby we were we were all kind of um, asked to work from home and a lot of people would have worked from home already. Um, but we might have thought, yeah, you know, we, we can handle this. We can keep on top of everything that comes with working from home. Um, but over time, we could probably see ourselves deteriorating a little bit um, in regards to our tiredness, being able to manage things. Um, and all that. So we can, you know, when it's needed to, to be online, maybe for, you know, more than your eight hours or whatever that might be in your working day. And um, that's OK in very small, exceptional circumstances, but it can't be um, it can't be uh, prolonged. We could suffer from anxiety and panic attacks, uh, feel empty or lacking in emotion. So we start withdrawing um, negative self-talk or we blame others. So we internally um, doubt yourselves, uh, feel we're not good enough, or we um, we we project that on onto others. We withdraw emotionally from family and friends, with inability to make decisions. Um, I have been in a shop when I, at the height of, of a burnout uh, when a couple of years ago, and I think I remember being there for like a good five minutes trying to decide what chocolate bar to buy. <laughs> So it, it can come down to that. It can really paralyze you. And then when you have so many decisions, it just becomes overwhelming. Um, lose motivation, a reduced initiative, reduced initiative and creativity. So again, you kind of shrink into yourself a little bit and we start to feel a little bit stuck. So as you can imagine, when some people might say, oh, I think you're, you're, you're burnt out, it's, it's a serious thing um, because it affects so many, so, much, so many aspects of your life. Um, that you really need to look at ways of protecting yourself from experiencing that. So if you're taking, if you're not taking care of yourself, it is normal to feel burnt out. So it doesn't mean that you're not able for the workload or you're not able uh, to manage family life um, or care for your relatives or, you know, what, whatever that might be. It does not mean that at all. All it means is that you need to take care of yourself. You need to build in those resources, mind yourself, mind your health, your mental well-being to allow you to be able then to take care um, of, of your work and what you're doing, your family um, and so on. So how do we recover um, or prevent ourselves from becoming burnt out? You build on your resilience. So you can either decide to go down the normal path of keeping your head down, the comfortable path. Everyone feels comfortable on, on, on the, the path that we take every single day. Even though it might be hard, even though we might be tired and exhausted, it, we default to that. It's an easier thing to do instead of actually taking action uh, to try and resolve it. 
or we can decide that no this is our this is our cut off we need to improve on ourselves to improve our lives and people and other people's lives so we might take a slightly different route and take small actions towards building um on our resilience to allow us to be more receptive to change and more receptive to things that are outside of our control. So who are these resilient people and what do they do? So first and foremost, they acknowledge change as a constant and seek to find the opportunity. So they no longer um, see change as an obstacle or as um, uh, something that you know they, they have to kind of put up with and they're not happy about. They see change as, oh, right, okay, you know, this could be so a new adventure that we, we could go on or a new solution to something. So it's to seek to find the opportunity. They recognize that change takes time and effort. You could get up tomorrow morning and decide to take a walk um, which is excellent and you think right this is this is going to set me up for the day and it will set you up for the day but if you don't take a walk for the rest of the week you will slowly go back to the to the old patterns of of kind of feeling a little bit low in yourselves so definitely it takes practice um, and time set goals with realistic expectations so we are um within our, our psyche we like to achieve things we like to feel valued um, and that we were offering something of value to our society and to our community and our family and, and our workplace. But sometimes our goals can be too large um, and we feel like we're never going to reach them or we're kind of failing a little bit. So I would ask that maybe you would sit down and maybe draft up a few goals that you would like to tackle in a month, then bring it down to a week and then bring it down to a day. Maybe it's two, maybe it's two small tasks each day that you would like to achieve. And when you achieve them at the end of the day, you get a sense of accomplishment. So you can celebrate yourselves a little bit. Value their contribution and those of, and those of others. So they feel, they, they believe in themselves, they value themselves in, in what they're doing. And they also ensure that they, they support and value others' contribu contributions as well. They recognize they're accountable for their behavior and happiness. So they recognize that for them to be happy, it's not up to somebody else to make them happy, whether that's their partner, uh, whether that's their children in, in the, the goals that they have or the aspirations for them, whether it's work, it's up to them to, to make the changes to make them happy, to change their behavior in whatever way that might be. Accepting of their own strengths and weaknesses and ask for help. So they accept that they're not perfect. They don't know all the answers. Um, and they ask for help when, when they don't know those. They view a challenge or a disagreement in a more positive light. So if, for example, um, I had a, a new solution uh, that was going out tomorrow um, and someone said, you know what, Sarah, that's not actually, that's not actually as great as you, you think it is because we, we have another solution here that, just does, that does that um, uh, activity just as well. I might say when I'm in a bad place, oh, you know, like you're, I might go negative about it and, and maybe have a little rant and rave. But if I'm after really minding myself the, the, the few weeks before um, and kind of building on that and believing in myself, my response to that might be, okay, what are you thinking here? Do we need to tweak or change it or we need, do we need to go back to the drawing board around it? So you're welcoming them into the conversation. You can see the value in that and the opportunity from another, per another person's perspective. You create a positive narrative narrative with optimistic thinking patterns. So again, you're you're defaulting to, to be positive. Um, and again, it's 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 yes, we're we're being realistic. We need to be realistic around things, but let's look at the opportunity that kind of that can emerge from this. Reflect and learn from their experiences and action and change. So yeah, we're gonna fail. Things aren't going to go to plan all the time. A lot of the time they don't go to plan at all. Um, and that's good. You know, we learn from that and we move forward, but just don't forget to action them. So to put things in place on what you'd like to tweak um, going forward. They have emotional intelligence and emotional agility. So their emotions do not control them. They learn from their emotions. 
So if they're feeling overwhelmed, they they kind of ask themselves, why am I feeling overwhelmed today? Is there a lot on my plate? Is there something I could do to try and reduce this feeling? Do I need to reach out to my manager and my colleagues and see if we can come together um, around maybe reducing or prioritizing the workload that's there? So let's look at some actions we, we can take today for a better tomorrow. So like building a muscle, increasing your resilience, as I've said, takes time and effort to do it. So you need to get up every day. If, if you decide that your, your um, action is to get up every day, maybe put on some music while you're having a little bit of breakfast and you do that one day a week. And um, yes, as I said, you'll have a good day, but try do it, you know, for a full week and, or a month and see how things go. So it takes that little bit of time and effort and you will always default to the normal route, the, the, the route that you've always traveled that path. So you need to actively um, engage with doing positive actions yourselves. So focus on four core components, build your connections. So make sure that you have your support network, try a little bit of face-to-face -face time. I know that's quite challenging now, uh, with the so with social distancing, distancing, and some people are still in in lockdown as well. But try your best uh, to to build those connections and always put uh, the relationship first. Foster wellness. So look after your body, look after your health, and um, make sure what what you're putting in is good. Embrace healthy thoughts. So put things in perspective. Um, you know, is the worst thing that could happen actually going to happen? Um, or what can we put in place to maybe uh, reduce the, the impact of that? And find a purpose. We all need a purpose in life. And each day, sometimes when we are, you know, in this challenging environment now, um, we might struggle to, to possibly find our purpose each day. But if we set a goal, um, possibly the night before for, for the day um, ahead, we have that purpose and we get up and we can we can try and achieve that. So there's just some practical tips and techniques that I jotted down here on, on two slides. Um, I have been on a few resilience uh, programs over the years and I found them really, really valuable. Um, but one thing that I noted was there were very high level things that you might do. Um, and I just thought I'd, I'd jot down a few practical things that you could actually take away today and maybe try. And I've um, just highlighted three of them uh, in no, I suppose no priority, but just things that, that, that popped up. So accept that you will have bad days. Don't overthink it. Um, take a break. Give yourself a break. Uh, rest and reflect on it the next day. So again, stop striving for, 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 for perfection. You will have bad days. Just keep thinking of the progress that's been made. Take a break. You know, just think of talking to yourself like a best friend would talk to you. Um, go easy on yourself. Set a shut off time and stick to it. Um, so kind of from the, the few sessions that I've been um, been to on Nest, um, you know, I've got to know and I've got to know over the last couple of months that, um, you know, the Fedora and the sent off community, there's no sunset time, but all the different time zones uh, that everybody's working in, it's always on. There's always someone there, uh, which is amazing. It's, it's amazing um, to see. But definitely it, it kind of pulls us in then to possibly, you know, working uh, long hours or, or hours that are eating into our sleep time and into our downtime. So try set a shut off time for yourself and stick to it. Um, you, will, you will find newfound downtime to do other things you enjoy. And you need this to be fresh and open the next day. So if you're continuously on that hamster wheel of work or for, you know, a hobby that you're really passionate about, um, by uh, contributing to the project. This is absolutely brilliant. It's great, but you, if, if you don't get a break from that, things become a lot bigger than they actually are. So you definitely need to prioritize getting some time away uh, from the computer uh, to, to actually enjoy other things. Stop striving for per perfe perfection. Be human, be real, become self-compassionate and believe what you and others can give each day is good enough. We're all good enough. Nobody expects any more. So please stop putting uh, your, you know, yourself under that pressure and trying to be that superstar. You're good enough as you are. Anything that you can contribute um, is, is ideal and it adds value. Practice gratitude. Uh, so think of three things you're grateful for before going asleep. That's really helped me. It could be small things like I had a really good coffee today or a cup of tea. Have fun, have a laugh. You need to have that. If you can't laugh, 
we're in a you know it's 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 not good so watch a funny movie uh, there's lots of funny shows on, on Netflix and things like that. Uh, we have the CP, CPE pub quiz and bingo, which is great crack. And share a shilly, silly joke of the day as well. And put things in perspective. Is this thing I'm getting worked up over, life or death? Very little, I would hope, is actually death. So park it, leave it to the following day, see how you feel then. So how can we support each other? We can listen to each other. Protect your relationship first, be respectful, have a regular sync with your mates and your teammates. You know, discuss how you'd like to work together and support each other. Give positive feedback. We always default um, to when we experience something negative that we need to tell people about that, you know, to, to ensure that maybe they don't go through the same thing or that, that we need to, to fix something. But let's try and default to giving a little bit of positive feedback. So if you like something, tell somebody, they'd be delighted to hear. Ask someone else for help. Encourage others to try new things. Offer help and become open to each other's ideas. So ask questions, get a little bit inquisitive around how people are doing and, and, and get involved a little bit more. So the question is to you now, what positive steps will you take going forward to, to support yourself and others um, throughout the rest of 2020 and into 2021? So thanks for taking time out to attend today. Um, for even just attending this session, you're already on the path to positive change. So I'll open the floor if there is any questions around that. Hi. Hi, Marie. Jumping on. Is, is Aoife helping you out with questions? Yes, she was meant to be now. Now maybe there was no questions. So if there's no questions, that that's totally cool. People as well. were just having some really good conversations in the chat, which I was okay. participating in reading. Um, plenty of oh my gosh, you're getting claps and oh, more claps. People, people are really loving it. We were talking about oh, all the different yeah. ways that uh, we unwind. Uh, some strategies on how different people disconnect from work. <laughs> Brilliant. That's or, really good. Uh, so yeah, there was a lot of awesome feedback here. That is really cool. And I can I can share this deck um as a PDF as well. And I also have additional support links as well. They're only like two or three minute reads or their podcasts, and um, that might help too. So thanks so much to everyone for your time today. Um, and I really wish you the best of luck on your resilience journey.